Yeah, inside the last 20 minutes of the Sports Max Zone for this Thursday. And uh, we're going to talk some football now. All teams have played 13 games in the Ray and Nevue Jamaica Premier League, marking the official halfway point in the competition as the four teams with a game in hand were in action on Wednesday. Cavalier continued their impressive run of form, defeating Humberland by two goals to one to record their fifth consecutive victory. Gadiel Irving and Chanel Thomas scoring for Cavalier, who moved to third on 27 points, same as second place Portmore United and a point behind leaders Mount Pleasant. Harborview also ended a solid week, getting by Dunn Beholden with goals from Shaquille Bradford and Jashawn Anglin. It's the first time this season that Harborview have managed to record back-to-back -back victories as they climb to ninth on 15 points. Their head coach Ludlow Bernard says he's proud of the team effort. Basically, we did pretty well today. We expected a lot of firepower from, from Dunbiol and we, we expected to concede possession more than anything and we expected to be scoring on the counter. Had we been a little bit more clinical, I think this game could have ended from the first half. But um, I kind of like the effort that the guys put in the second half with Dunbiol and really coming at us and defensively for me is where I am really happy that we're standing up to withstand pressure, not making silly mistakes as previously, and we need to continue that. Yes, and our in-house football analyst, Leger Williams, joins us to recap what has happened midweek and maybe even further back onto the weekend in the Jamaica Premier League. Let's start with Ludlow Bernal, because the Harborview team having some issues here all season. They actually ended last season with four consecutive losses, the second uh, leg of the quarterfinal playoff, then they lost the two semifinal playoffs, and then lost the third place playoff as well, and started this season winless from their first six games. So the two win here, wins here back to back for them, um, Lige, would be very satisfying for Coach Bernard, as we said, first time back to back wins so far this season. Yeah, most definitely. I, I think that Harborview, they, they've been struggling to get it together. And the last time I was here a couple of days ago, Monday, I think. I said that, you know, I trusted him to get it together. It's just whether or not it would be enough for uh, that to har uh, propel Harborview into the top six. And I'm still not quite sure, but it was definitely an improved performance than what we've seen um, over the past couple of weeks for Harborview. You know, the attackers are still getting those chances. I, I think that Shaquille Bradford has been a really astute addition to the squad, and he's getting a lot of goals, eight goals, I think, now this season. So Harborview, they, they still have the quality in the team. Ajuma Johnson... Um, he's injured right now. He'll be out for a while. We're seeing Jashan Anglin, two penalties in consecutive weeks, but not only the penalties, man of the match performances as well. He's a player that I think has so much quality, one of the best midfielders in the league. So I, I think if they're going to piggyback off of those players, they should be fine. But Lola Bernard spoke about the defence as well, and they haven't been really defensively sound so far this season. That's something that they're going to have to work on. And They'll, they'll have a really uphill battle if they want to get into that top six, but there's still so much of the season to go. It's just whether or not they can get all of their components of their team clicking. Yeah, and you made a good point there, Alish, because I quite agree with you about Jashawn Anglin. Uh, by the way, Jashawn Anglin and Shaquille Bradford scoring both of Harborview's goals in two games back-to-back. -back. Same scores for Harborview in their wins. But Jashawn Anglin is a player to me with immense quality. And uh, since he has returned from the USL stint he had, I'm not sure if he has delivered for Harborview at the level that we know he can. He appears to be getting into good form now, but I think he's a player that can offer a lot more to Harborview. Yeah, I think so as well. Lola Bernard also spoke about the fact that, you know, maybe he hasn't been as fit as he would have wanted him to be, especially at the start of this season. You know, last season, he wasn't as consistent, but we saw the flashes of brilliance from him. Um, the season before that he helped them to a title so I do think that he has the quality I you know I, I remember sitting actually close to coach Hal Grimson and saying and I was watching a game and however we were playing and coach said wow he's still playing in Jamaica you know not that necessarily that you know maybe he's going to pick him soon but he has been a part of a couple national squads so I think that just indicates his quality I'm not quite sure if he knew that before or if he'll even see this but I think it just goes to show that he has so much quality and if he continues to apply himself and try and get consistent game time, it's a player that he's a player that probably shouldn't be in the Jamaica Premier League too much longer. Yeah, let's talk about another fixture, Cavalier overcoming Humber Lion. And in that match, Humber Lion had a couple chances. They failed to capitalize on it. 
and as a result, we have this score line. Yeah, I, I think Cavalier's entire game model, Rudolf Speed's game model, is set a lot around transitional football, you know, really sucking in the opposition and then just really trying to break as quickly as possible because they have such devastating attacking talent usually. You know, last season it was Colin Anderson, Dwayne Atkinson. Um, Dwayne Atkinson is back now in the fold. And then to add, add to that, they have Shanil Thomas now who's scoring, I think, five goals this season. Yeah, Colin Ainsworth. Match. Yeah, Colin Ainsworth who has been moved into more of an attacking position. Christopher Ainsworth. Christopher Ainsworth, sorry. Who has been moved into more of an attacking um, position and he's performing really well, the young player going to be in the, um, the under-20 yes. Jamaica training squad um, as well this week. So I, I, I think, and then when you add that to John Mario, Calvin, all of the attacking players that they have, but I think in games that they are forced to dominate themselves and have all of the possession, I think because it's a stylistic clash, sometimes they can afford some chances to the opposition. And I'm not saying that Humble Line deserved to get anything out of the game yesterday, but Cavalier, I think that's one part of their game model that they need to adjust in, in the fact that when teams allow them to have the ball, they're not quite as penetrative as they need to be. And we saw that bite them, especially, I think, in the Link Cup final against Portmore United, a team with a similar style, a st similar setup. And I think as Cavalier go forward, they're going to have to find a different way to attack than transitional play. As we see here for a goal like this, they're great on the transition, but you're going to have more, you're going to have more phases of play, especially in playoff scenarios when the game is a bit slower. So it's up to them to fix that, and I'm sure Rudolf Speed will have his fixes for that, and they'll progress as the season goes on. Yeah, you mentioned Janiel Thomas, and then you went on to make your point. He was man of the match for this particular fixture, and of course, he was interviewed about his ability to score goals, but what really stood out for me is the fact that he kept mentioning he's also willing to assist. And he does a very good job of that, you know, creating chances for other players, not being a selfish footballer. What do you make of that aspect of him? Yeah, I, I agree with him, and I think that's how his coach sees him as well. Um, when he was coming up um, at Jamaica College, it was very evident that, you know, he had the, the quality to you know, help out in attacking multiple facets. He wasn't only a goal scorer. And we're seeing him being deployed deeper and deeper. And the good thing about that is that it's not stopping his goal scoring exploits in the recently concluded Caribbean Cup where Cavalier went all the way to the final. He was a tournament's top goal scorer. We're seeing him now with five league goals so far. So I think he is a player that can score goals, but because of his immense quality, his link-up play, um, his willingness to run the channels, his willingness to make runs to vacate spaces for other players as well. I see him as a player that can not only impact for this Cavalier team, but you know, I don't like speaking about the league as if it's a transitional one for players to go overseas, but I think his game would translate really well to other leagues where you have to be a bit more selfless than most Jamaican players tend to be. And he has scored in three consecutive games now as well to bring yeah. his status to five. And uh, before we wrap, some credit to Cavalier on their clean sheets as well. They had gone four clean sheets before last night, and it was an own goal, so they scored yeah. on themselves. So they can claim that no team has scored against them in five matches. Yeah, and you could see how <laughs> upset they were when that own goal went in there. Definitely a team, because in the previous ten games yes. before that run of um, clean sheets, they conceded a goal in all of those games. So. I think they're, they're a team now trying to break that mold and really turn back into a defensive juggernaut because if you're going to be a transitional team, yes, as we've have. seen you know, throughout the years, you have to be able to first defend well, mm -hmm. then be able to attack, and that's what Cavalier tried to put forward. And you know, if that's their game model and if it's going to work this well, yes. they're definitely going to be a strong team as the season winds down. I agree with you, Liz, 100%. We go to break. Back with more after this.